Hey everyone, how you doing today? This is Gilbert with Interactive Utopia and today we're going to be talking about binary search. We're going to be implementing it in PHP. Uh, but before that, uh, I wanted to let you know all my code is going to be in my GitHub, Gilberto Cortez. I'm sorry, github.com forward slash Gilberto Cortez. Um, basically, um, if you have never been introduced to the concept of binary search, uh, I'll try to give you a quick summary of it. Uh, it is basically a faster way of searching, uh, of, uh, you know, an algorithm to search a little bit faster, uh, you know, like maybe, for example, in an array. Uh, Wikipedia does a good uh, deal in, in kind of explaining it pretty quickly. Uh, so in computer science, binary search, also known as half interval search, logarithm search or binary chop is a search or, or algorithm that finds the position of a target value within a sorted array. Binary search compares the target value to the middle element of the array. If they're not equal, the half in which the target can lie is eliminated and the search continues on the remaining half. Uh, again, taking the middle element to compare to the target value and repeating until the target is found. If the search ends with the remaining half being empty, the target is not on the array. Uh, and then, you know, we have a little picture over here. So let's say you have a big array and you're looking for the number seven, for example. Uh, instead of going, you know, one works three you know going one by one and be like okay we're gonna check one it, it's not it three is not it four is not it six is not it seven oh that's it uh, and then you know you will get your answer but what if the number is like 71 or what if you have like a billion something you know numbers so that's where it gets complicated so what it does is uh, it, it works pretty much like we do, you know, think about it when you're looking at a dictionary or an encyclopedia and you're looking for something instead of starting in the beginning and going word for word, you usually start maybe at the middle, like you just open the book, look at the middle and you're like, well, I'm looking for a cheese, I don't know, and uh, I mean, um, vehicle so you know you got to go way back to see so then you know you kind of go back check again maybe you now are went to battery and you're like oh okay so now i'm past it so now you gotta go back uh so you gotta uh it just uh instead of looking one by one we look at certain values and then we evaluate them and we know if it's lower than that bigger than that and where we can point or search direction in i would say uh, so hopefully I, I, I'm able to explain that in in a in a good way. Uh, so let, let's go ahead and, and kind of show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let's go to Visual Studio Code. So I already have something implemented. I just kind of want to explain it to you and let you know. Let me clear this out and let you know what I'm what I'm doing. And this comes um, in the interviews quite a bit, so it's something good to know. Uh, you know, maybe if you're looking for a job or something like that. So, uh, again, binary search works by splitting arrays in half, looking at the value and then using the half where the value is located to look again. Basically, cut searchable values in half each time that it runs. That's why it's uh, pretty efficient because, again, you got a billion uh, findings, then, you know, half and you, you go you're only do half of that then ha that's half a million you got to look at then half of that that's a quarter of a billion you got to look at and so on until you know you get to a smaller number instead of looking a billion times uh it is much faster than linear search again look kind of looking one by one which looks uh which again you know if, if it's like in the beginning and you get lucky it's not a problem but most of the time uh, you know, when you're working with larger data, this is where it is going to um, uh, help you, you know, with speed and make it more efficient. So, you know, as a, a quick uh, example of a question that you might be giving is, given the follow following array, find the array key of the volume 9. So we're looking for what space is number 9 in. And we can go ahead and count them, you know, that's 0, that's 1. That's two, that's three, that's four. So the answer should give us four, okay? Uh, but how do we do that? So, uh, you know, the way that I worked it in, I created a function, which basically gets called at the end, um, right here. 
and in which we provide the array and the value that we're looking for. Um, so that, you know, that's the array, input array, and then that's the number we're looking for. Uh, in the beginning, we, you got to think about it this way, you know, we have 100% that we're looking at. So uh, we have a starting point and an end point. So from zero to 100, I'm sorry, zero to 100, that's basically what we're looking for. Uh, the starting point is zero. The end point that we're looking at, it's, you know, whatever the size of the array is. Um, we're removing one because array, you know, values, the key values start at zero, not at one. So that's why we're removing that one. Um, and then we are checking to make sure that the left side, the lower value, it's always on the left and not higher or on the right side of, you know, the higher value. So as long as the left value is, you know, lower, then we keep running that loop. If the low value gets bigger than the high value, then that means that we didn't find the number and that means that it pretty much doesn't exist. Uh, and you know, it's gonna return an, a false or an error or something like that, which we do down here. Um, so while we're, while the lower, it's lower than the higher limit, we're running this uh, loop where we find the middle you know, between the two, so, so so the half of it. And then at that half, we're gonna be like, okay, we're looking for number nine. Are we on, and let's say that, let's just take a look. So we're looking at number nine and we're probably gonna be around 11. So it's gonna take a look and it's like, okay, that's number 11. Is it smaller or bigger than what, what we're supposed to be looking for? And then you're gonna be like, oh, so it's smaller. So then you move the high value to that middle number minus that number. Uh, so instead we're not, we're gonna be starting basically, or the higher number is gonna be nine instead of, uh, you know, we're gonna go from the negative five to the nine instead of negative five all the way to the 34. So then it's gonna look at that. It's gonna take that number in the middle, It's which is, you know, gonna be two. It's gonna look at it and it's gonna, then it's gonna be like, oh, okay, so now we need to go bigger. So then the lower, the low side goes to two and now it's gonna be, I'm sorry, to six uh, because two was already taken a look at. So now it's gonna be, we're gonna be looking between six and nine only. And then it's gonna uh, take a look at those ones and then we'll find out basically that it's number nine, which is on, on, spit, on the spot number four. And then it's gonna give us that answer. Um, so that's basically what it does. And then if the number, basically we're here, we're checking, you know, the, the, the methodology or, you know, the coding side of it is we check to see if the number, the middle number, it's in the, um, if, if the value from that middle number, um, key is the same as the value that we're looking for, then we're returning that middle number key value if that makes sense, because sorry, if I didn't explain it properly, that this middle number, what the what it's, it's saying, it, it's not calling the value directly, but it, the key in the array. And what we're checking is the value in that key, uh, but the number that we're, like the middle number that we're getting, it's the, it, it, we're not getting like the number nine or the number, uh, you know, 11 or six, we're just looking at that space. So uh, if we got 10, then we're looking at, you know, five uh, at, at space five, which is basically value 11. Uh, and, but again, you know, once we come across it, check to make sure, you know, that space in the array, it's the actual value that we're looking for. Then we return the, the key location value. Uh, so again, in this case would be on, on location, on, on key four. Um, and this is the, what it, you know, where it checks, you know, if the number is smaller than whatever value it's in that uh, middle key, then we are moving the right side, you know, we're moving it to the left, we're making it smaller. Uh, if the number is bigger, then we're making the left side or the lower side a little bigger, thus uh, making our search uh, area a little bit smaller. Um, and then that's pretty much about it. That's the implementation of it. Uh, we can test it. Well, basically, we provide an array. It could be whatever array. Uh, 
and we provide the array, we provide the value we're looking for, we call the function, and then it's gonna give us the answer back, true, false, whatever is going on. Um, from there, uh, then we just display that to the user, you know, found the value or did not find the value. So let's go to Firefox real quick. And uh, so I have it running already, refresh it. So we found the value in nine at array key four. So um, I the way that I'm printing it, it's um, printing whatever value we're you know we're providing, um, printing the value in the array just to kind of confirm it's the same, and then we're providing that key where the value is. So you know visual representation and the actual key, which I guess is a little bit more than what it was asked for. Uh, but for example, if we're looking for let's just change that to twenty two. Um, and save that, which would be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We should, we should be on space seven. So if we refresh it, here we go. It's on space seven. So we know that it's working. And uh, that's pretty much about it. Again, a, a very important um, thing that you should know more if you're going into a coding interview. Uh, binary search is not only implemented in PHP, it could be implemented in, in, in JavaScript, C++, uh, Java. It's just like a methodology. It's just a way of doing it. Uh, it. It's not like the actual coding of it. It's more like the idea of it. So if you do uh, code in different uh, languages, it's something that you can can implement in your application most probably and you can see why it's going to be it's really important because you know we go from 10 uh, items we're looking at to five items we're looking at to three items we're looking at or two and then we find the last you know which is the, the actual the, the actual uh, value that we're looking for so again instead of 10 maybe it was uh, so and two five three 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 or four uh, that, you know actual searches that we have to do and this is just on a 10 digit array again imagine for bigger data sets it's just going to save you time tremendously so uh that's about it if you like this video please do subscribe to the channel if you have any questions leave them in the comment box below and uh, if you need any help with your project or have any questions feel free to reach out you can learn more about me at interactiveutopia.com and it will be my pleasure to assist you thank you again and i hope that you have a great day